Welcome to the chapter The Fundamental Unit of Life. This slide presents the overview of the chapter. Learning Objectives By the end of this chapter, you will be able to Understand the importance of cell Know the discovery of cell and nucleus Explain the structural organization of a cell Describe the plasma membrane and its characteristics Explain the importance of cell wall and its characteristics Describe the nucleus Interpret cytoplasm Illustrate the important cell organelles Introduction Before entering into the chapter, follow the instructions shown on the screen. Click each tab to know more. In lower classes, we have learned that our earth is a beautiful place wherein different types of living organisms live happily. All living beings are composed of cells, from tiny masses to huge conifers and from invisible bacteria to huge blue whales. All have a basic unit called cell. All living organisms carry out certain functions. Do you know what is the basic structural unit of an organ? Who discovered this cell? What is the size and shape of this cell? What is plasma membrane? What is osmosis? What is cell wall and its importance? What is the nucleus? What is cytoplasm? What is cell organelle and types of cell organelles? Let us try to answer these questions and learn more about the cell and its importance. Discovery of the cell In the year 1665, a British scientist named Robert Hooke discovered a cell. He developed a compound microscope by using two lenses in order to achieve greater magnification. He studied a thin piece of cork, soft bark from oak tree under his microscope. From the microscope, he observed that the cork piece looked similar to the structure of honeycomb with many empty spaces or empty box-like structures. He thought that these empty spaces are made up of very small cavities. He called these cavities as cell. This was for the first time to be observed that living things consist of separate units called cell. In Latin, the word cell refers to little room. After Robert Hooke, Antony van Leeuwenhoek was the first scientist to see living bodies like bacteria, yeast, protozoa, red blood cells and the teeming life in a drop of pond water under microscope. A scientist named Robert Brown, 1773 to 1858, made great contributions to the study of cells. He discovered the nucleus in the cell in the year 1831. Purkinje in 1839 coined the term protoplasm for the fluid substance of the cell. Two biologists, Matthias Jacob Schleden, a famous zoologist, and Theodore Squan, a famous botanist, were the first to claim that all the plant and animal kingdoms are composed of cells and this cell is the basic unit of life. In the year 1855, Rudolf von Virchow first explained that new cells would be formed by the division of pre-existing cells. With the discovery of electron microscope, it became possible to observe and understand the complex structure of the cell and its organelles. 
Here, let us perform an activity to observe cells in onion peel. Click each tab to know more. Take a piece of onion and cut out a small fleshy portion from the bulb. Break this fleshy piece into two halves and you will find a thin transparent peel holding the piece together. Now, take out the peel and cut a small piece from it. Next, take a permanent slide and place a peel on it. Next, add a drop of water on the slide and spread the peel evenly. Cover the slide with a cover slip. Next, place the permanent slide mount under a microscope and observe it. Draw the image of what you have observed along with labels. It is observed that all the cells are similar. The cells are in rectangular or linear in shape and all the cells are firmly bounded together. From the experiment, we learned that all the cells of onion are similar in shape irrespective of the size. The onion peel cells are the plant cells. The invention of magnifying lens has led to the discovery of the microscopic world. By using this magnifying lens, it is observed that a single cell comprises of entire organism. Examples, amoeba, chlamydomonas, bacteria and paramecium. These organisms are termed as unicellular organisms. On the other hand, an organism which is made up of more than one cell is called multicellular organism. Examples, plants, animals and some fungi. The size and shape of the cell depends on the specific function they perform. For example, in some organisms like amoeba, the cells have changing shapes while in some organisms like human beings, the shape of these cells will be more or less fixed and is peculiar for a specific type of cell. For example, nerve cells have a typical shape. Each and every living cell has the capability to perform different functions. For example, in multicellular organisms like human body, different parts perform different functions. The heart of human body pumps the blood. The stomach helps in digestion of food. Lungs help in the process of breathing and so on. Similarly, unicellular organisms also have different parts in their body to perform different functions. In fact, each such cell has certain specific components called cell organelles in it. Each cell organelle performs some specific functions they include. Clearing the waste material from the cell. Making new material in the cell and so on. Because of these cell organelles, the cell can live and perform all its functions. All these cell organelles together constitute the basic unit called cell. It is interesting to know that all the cells are made up of same organelles irrespective of what their function is or what organism they are found in. We have learned that a cell consists of special components called cell organelles in it. When viewed under a microscope, three components are observed in each and every cell. These components are nucleus, plasma membrane or cell membrane and cytoplasm. 
Because of these three features, all the activities inside the cell and interaction of this cell with its environment are possible. Let us study about the plasma membrane. Plasma membrane can be defined as a biological outer layer of a cell, which is composed of two layers of phospholipids and embedded with proteins. Plasma membrane is the boundary between the cell internal contents and its outer environment. The job of plasma membrane is to regulate what enters and what exits the cell. Protoplasm of a cell consists of two parts. They are cytoplasm, nucleus. Plasma membrane is also termed as selectively permeable membrane because it allows only certain substances to pass through while preventing passage of remaining substances. In a simple way, we can say that plasma membrane acts like the god at a gated community. Plasma membrane is a living, flexible membrane. Characteristics of plasma membrane Following are the characteristics of plasma membrane. The plasma membrane or cell membrane is made of two layers of phospholipids back to back. Phospholipids have one head and two tails. The plasma membrane consists of many proteins embedded in it. The plasma membrane regulates the entry and exit of the cell. Many molecules cross the cell membrane by the process of diffusion and osmosis. The fundamental structure of the membrane is phospholipid bilayer and it forms a stable barrier between two aqueous compartments. The proteins present in the plasma membrane act as pumps, channels, receptors, enzymes or structural components. Now let us study about the effect of animal cell or plant cell when placed in sugar or salt solutions. When a plant cell or an animal cell is placed in salt or sugar solution, then one of the following three things could happen. If the medium surrounding the cell has higher water concentration when compared to the cell, then it indicates that the outside solution is very dilute. The cell will gain water through the process of osmosis. This type of solution is termed as hypotonic solution. Water molecules move freely in both the directions across the cell membrane, but more water enters into the cell than the water that goes out. Because of this, the size of the cell swells up. If the medium has exactly the same water concentration as that of cell, then there will be not any net movement of water across the membrane. Such solution is termed as an isotonic solution. Water molecules pass through the membrane equally in both directions. That is, the amount of water going in is same as the amount of water going out. Hence, there will not be any net movement of water and thus the size of the cell remains the same. If the medium has lower concentration of water when compared to the cell, then the cell loses water by the process of osmosis. This type of solution is called hypertonic solution. Even though water molecules pass through the cell membrane in both the directions, the amount of water leaving the cell is more when compared to the amount of water entering the cell. Thus, the cell gets shrunk. Here, let us perform an activity to study the movement of water in animals by using eggs. Click each tab to know more. To study movement of water in animals by using eggs. To perform this activity, following materials are required. 3 beakers, dilute HCl, salt, 2 equal sized raw eggs, cloth to wipe. 
scales or strip of papers for measurement and one tablespoon. Take two raw eggs and place them in dilute HCl solution for four to five hours. After four hours, take out the eggs from beaker with the help of a tablespoon. Wash the eggs with tap water. Wipe the eggs with the cloth. Observe the changes in the egg and measure the circumference of each egg with the help of scale or strip of paper and mark the length. Initial Observation It is observed that the eggshells dissolved in hydrochloric acid leaving the egg membrane and the interior of the egg intact. Note, dilute HCl removes the egg of the shell because the shell is made of calcium carbonate. This calcium carbonate when placed in dilute HCl gets dissolved. It is observed that the circumference of the two eggs remained same. Take two beakers. Place one egg in a beaker with tap water. Place another egg in salt water. Leave them aside for 3 to 4 hours. After 4 hours, remove the eggs from beaker and wipe them with cloth. Now, observe the changes and measure the circumference of the eggs with the same strip of paper. It is observed that the egg placed in tap water swells, whereas the egg placed in salt water shrinks. From the experiment, we learn that the egg placed in tap water swells. This is because it absorbs water by the process of osmosis. The egg placed in salt solution shrinks. This is because the water passes out of the egg solution into salt solution as the salt solution is more concentrated. The process in which water molecules enter the cell is called endosmosis. In our experiment, the egg placed in tap water exerts endosmosis. The process in which water molecules leave the cell is called exosmosis. In our experiment, the egg placed in salt water exerts exosmosis. Here, let us perform an activity to observe osmosis with the help of dried raisins in different solutions. Click each tab to know more. To study the process of osmosis with the help of dried raisins in different solutions. To perform this activity, following materials are needed. Two beakers, tap water, sugar, dried raisins or kishmish or dry grapes. Take 100 ml of water in a beaker. Put few dry raisins or kishmish in it. Leave them aside for 2 hours. Observe the changes after 2 hours. Initial Observation After 2 hours, it is observed that each raisin absorbs water and swells when placed in pure tap water. Now take 100 ml of saturated sugar solution in a beaker. 
put the swollen raisins from the previous activity into the saturated sugar solution. Leave them for one night. Observe the changes in the next morning. Final observation. It is observed that raisins lose water and shrink. From the experiment, we learned that the weight of soaked swollen raisins is more than that of dry raisins. This is because the cells present in the outer layer of raisins permit water to pass through. Now, let us perform another activity and learn how the water passes through the materials. Now, let us study about the other important extra layer of the plant cell called the cell wall. Cell wall is the unique feature which is observed in plant cells. The main difference between the plant cell and the animal cell is the cell wall. The plant cell consists of a cell wall outside of the cell membrane whereas animal cells do not contain cell wall. The plant cell wall mainly consists of cellulose. Cellulose is a complex substance. The main function of cellulose is it provides structural strength to plants. When a living plant cell loses water through osmosis, then there will be either shrinkage or contraction of the contents of cell away from the cell wall. This phenomenon is termed as plasmolysis. Let us perform an activity to know more about plasmolysis. Here, let us perform an activity to observe the cell membrane in real leaf. Click each tab to know more. Take a real leaf and break it to take out a peel. Take a permanent slide. Place this peel on a slide and put a drop of water on it. Next, cover it with a cover slip. Place the permanent slide mount under microscope and absorb the light portion of a leaf under it. It is observed that the leaf peel contains green colored granules termed as chloroplasts. These chloroplasts contain chlorophyll which helps in the process of photosynthesis. Take concentrated salt solution. Now add one or two drops of concentrated salt solution on the leaf peel. Leave it aside for 5 to 10 minutes. Cover the slide with cover slip and place it under microscope. Next, observe the changes under microscope. It is observed that the water present in rio leaf comes out which results in shrinking of cytoplasm and cell membrane. From this activity, we learned that when a salt solution is poured over a peel of rio leaf, the water present inside the rio leaf comes out. This leads to the shrinking of cytoplasm along with the cell boundary. This shrinkage of cytoplasm happens only in living cells because they have the capability to absorb water by osmosis. Cell walls allow the cells of plants, fungi and bacteria to withstand very dilute or hypotonic external media without bursting. In this media, the cells take up water through the process of osmosis. The cell swells because of osmosis and builds up extra pressure against the cell wall. The cell wall in turn exerts an equal pressure against the swollen cell.
Because of these cell walls, plant cells can withstand greater changes in the surrounding medium when compared to animal cells. Now, let us study about the characteristics of cell wall. It is tough and is the most important part of the cell. It is a flexible porous layer that provides a definite shape and cell protection. It exchanges substances continuously with other cells during its growth and development. It provides mechanical strength and support to the cell. It has narrow tiny pores called pits and very fine strands of cytoplasm called plasmodesmata. Role of the cell wall in plant cells The plant cells have greater resistivity over surrounding medium when compared to animal cells because the plant cells applies an inward wall pressure to resist the outward pressure exerted by the cell sap. Here, let us perform an activity to observe the nucleus in cheek cells. Click each tab to know more. To observe the nucleus in cheek cells. To perform this experiment, the materials required are a toothpick, or ice cream spoon, permanent slide, cover slip, watch glass, needle, blotting paper, 1% methylene blue, glycerin, microscope, etc. Precautions Do not scrape the inner side of the cheek too hard because it may lead to bleeding. Scrapped material should be spread uniformly on the slide. See that there should not be any air bubbles under the cover slip. Excess stains should be drained off on the permanent slide. Take a permanent slide and add few drops of methylene blue on it. Now take a toothpick in such a way that the flat end should be placed inside the mouth. Now, put the toothpick inside the mouth and move the pick up and down for 12 times by sweeping agonist to the cheek. Remove the toothpick from the mouth and place it on the dye and spread the toothpick in the dye to enable our cheek cells to spread out. Remove the toothpick from the dye and cover it with a cover slip. Tap the needle on the cover slip to spread the cells. Place the permanent slide mount under the microscope. Observe the permanent slide under the low and high power of the microscope. Note the observations in your book. It is observed that the shapes of the cheek cells are irregular. It is observed that each cheek cell has a dark colored border. It is observed that dark colored spherical and oval shaped structures are present near the center of the cell. The dark colored outer edge of cheek cells is called cell membrane. The dark blue color inside the cell membrane is called cytoplasm. Dark colored spherical and oval shaped structures near the center of the cell is called nucleus. Nucleus is named by Robert Brown in the year 1831. Nucleus is the most important organelles of the cell. It is also termed as the cell's control room. Nucleus is the largest and is different from all the cell organelles. 
Schleden, who proposed the cell theory, thought that new cells were created from the nucleus called cytoblast. Functions of Nucleus Nucleus regulates and controls all the functions of the cell. It determines the characteristics of an organism. It consists of all the genetic information. It is involved in the process of cell division. The nuclear membrane encloses the nucleus and separates it from its contents of cytoplasm. Nuclear membrane is similar to the cell membrane. Cells are categorized into types based on the presence or absence of the organized nucleus. They are eukaryotic cells, organized nucleus, and prokaryotic cells without organized nucleus. Eukaryotic cells Eukaryotic cells contain a membrane-bounded nucleus. Almost all the eukaryotic cells have a nucleus. Red blood cells in some mammals and phloem sieve tubes in plants contain nuclei in the beginning and later thrown out of the cells and destroyed. Prokaryotic cells Prokaryotic cells do not have a nuclear membrane to bind the nuclear material. Examples Bacteria, cyanobacteria, blue-green algae. Cytoplasm In cells, the space between the plasma membrane and nucleus is called cytoplasm. It consists of various inorganic molecules like water, salts, proteins, nucleic acids, organic compounds, and different kinds of enzymes. Cytoplasm is made up of various cell organelles. These cell organelles are bounded by a plasma membrane. Each of these cell organelles perform a particular function for this cell. We have already learned that eukaryotes have membrane-bounded cell organelles, whereas prokaryotes do not contain membrane-bounded cell organelles. Functions of the cytoplasm It helps in the exchange of materials between cell organelles. Breaking down of nucleus takes place in cytoplasm. It helps in intracellular distribution of molecules, enzymes and nutrients within the cell. Biosynthesis of proteins, fatty acids and nucleotides takes place in cytoplasm. Now, let us learn about protoplasm versus cytoplasm. Now, let us learn about the important cell organelles in plant cell. Cell organelles perform an important function in the cell. There are many cell organelles that are found in cytoplasm of this cell. They are endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, lysosome, mitochondria, ribosomes, plastids, vacuole. Click each tab to know more. Endoplasmic reticulum When a cell is absorbed under an electron microscope, a network of membranes appear throughout the cytoplasm called endoplasmic reticulum, ER. This network creates passages in the cytoplasm to transport the substances from one part of the cell to other. The structure of ER membrane is similar to the plasma membrane. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum, smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum. Some granules like structures are present on the surface of endoplasmic reticulum called ribosomes. Ribosomes play an important role in protein synthesis. This type of parts is called as the rough endoplasmic reticulum or ER. Proteins are manufactured in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum. If the parts are sections of endoplasmic reticulum 
do not contain ribosomes. Then it is said to be smooth endoplasmic reticulum, SER. SER helps in the manufacturing of lipids, fat molecules, which are important for cell function. These manufactured proteins and lipids are sent to various parts in the cell based on the need through endoplasmic reticulum. Some of these proteins and lipids help in building the cell membrane. Functions of endoplasmic reticulum It serves as a channel and helps in transporting of materials between different regions of cytoplasm or between cytoplasm and nucleus. It acts as a cytoplasmic framework and provides surface area for various biogeochemical activities. In the liver cells of vertebrate, smooth endoplasmic reticulum helps in detoxifying many poisons and drugs. The membranes of endoplasmic reticulum are made up of number of enzymes for various metabolic activities and cytochromes that take place in electron transport. Golgi body or Golgi apparatus. In the year 1898, Camillo Golgi discovered this organelle by using a compound microscope. But its finer structure can be observed only under an electron microscope. Golgi apparatus is made up of several membrane bound vesicles that are arranged parallel to each other in stacks called as cisterns. The proteins and other substances that are produced in the ribosomes reach the Golgi body through these vesicles. The distinct components that are visible in the Golgi complex are flattened sacs or cisternae, clusters of tubules and vesicles, large vesicles or vacuoles. The Golgi apparatus has convex forming phase and concave maturing phase. The convex forming phase receives vesicles from endoplasmic reticulum and the concave maturing phase produces secretory vesicles and lysosomes. The number of Golgi bodies varies from cell to cell. The number of Golgi apparatus are large in cells that secrete hormones and enzymes. Functions of Golgi Apparatus Golgi apparatus helps in secretion of mucus, enzymes and hormones. It helps in storage, packaging and modification of secretory products in vesicles. It helps in the manufacturing of complex sugars from simple sugars. It helps in the formation of lysosomes. Now, let us learn about lysosomes. Lysosome Lysosomes are membrane-bound sacs that are filled with digestive enzymes. These enzymes are made up of rough endoplasmic reticulum or ER. Lysosomes have a resistant covering membrane that protects the cell from digestive enzymes. Lysosomes help in the disposal of the wastage from the cell. Lysosomes maintain the cell clean by removing the worn out materials and digesting the foreign or bacterial materials. Lysosomes contain destructive enzymes. If any bacteria enter the cell, lysosomes break them into small pieces. This is because the enzymes released by lysosomes are very powerful. Suppose, if the cell gets damaged, lysosomes burst and release an enzyme which digests their own cell. Hence, lysosomes are called suicidal bags of the cell. Functions of lysosomes Lysosomes help in intracellular digestion. Lysosomes bring about cellular breakdown and are associated with aging. 
They provide energy during starvation. Mitochondria Mitochondria is called as the powerhouse of the cell. Mitochondria is a membrane-bound organelle present in almost all the eukaryotic cells. These organelles act like a digestive system which takes in nutrients, breaks them down and creates energy-rich molecules for the cell. The biochemical processes of the cell are known as cellular respiration. Now, let us learn about other important organelle ribosomes. Ribosomes are small granule-like structures present in the cytoplasm of the cell. Ribosomes are present in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes except in mature sperms and RBCs. In eukaryotic cells, ribosomes occur freely in the cytoplasm as well as attach it to the outer surface of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. In case of prokaryotic cells, ribosomes are found floating freely in cytoplasm. Functions of Ribosomes Ribosomes help in protein synthesis of the cell. Hence, they are termed as protein factories of the cell. Plastids Plastids are cell organelles that are present only in plant cells. Plastids consist of various membrane layers that are present inside a material called stroma. From external view, plastids are similar to mitochondria. Plastids are of three types. They are chloroplasts, chromoplasts, leucoplasts. Chloroplasts the primary function of chloroplasts is to trap energy from sunlight and transform it into chemical energy. This helps in carrying the process of photosynthesis. Each chloroplast is covered by a double-layered unit membrane. The inner membrane of chloroplast is made up of matrix or stroma and disc-like bodies called grana. Chromoplasts Chromoplasts are colored plastids. Chromoplasts contain fat-soluble pigments. These are formed either from chloroplasts or leucoplasts. Chromoplasts are red, orange and yellow plastids present in fruits, petals and flowers of a plant. Leucoplasts Leucoplasts are colorless plastids. These are named on the basis of substances they store. They store starch, oils, and protein granules. Vacuole Vacuoles are the storage bubbles found in the cells. It is a membrane bound organelle found in both animal, bacterial, fungal and plant cells but are much larger in plant cells. Vacuoles might store food or any variety of nutrients a cell might need to survive. They can even store waste products. Here, let us perform an activity to observe mitochondria in onion peel. Click each tab to know more. Take an onion and remove the peel. Prepare a solution of Janus Green B, basic dye used to stain mitochondria in a beaker by mixing 200 mg of Janus Green B in 100 ml of water. 
Take a permanent slide and a cover slip. Place the onion peel on the permanent slide. Now pour the Janus green bean solution on the peel and keep it aside for 5 minutes. Now place the cover slip on the permanent slide. Remove the air bubbles by pressing on the cover slip. Place the permanent slide mount under a microscope. Now, observe the slide under the high magnification microscope. A ball-like structure is observed at the center of the cell wall. Green oval-shaped or cylindrical grains are observed inside the cytoplasm. The ball-like structure at the center of the cell wall is called nucleus. The green oval-shaped or cylindrical grains present inside the cytoplasm are called mitochondria. Mitochondria are small, spherical and cylindrical organelles. Generally, mitochondria is about 2 to 8 micron long and about 0.5 micron wide. The size of the mitochondria is 150 times smaller than the nucleus. In each cell, there are about 100 to 150 mitochondria. When the cell is absorbed under compound microscope, the mitochondria appear as oval or cylindrical dots in the cell. When the cell is observed under electron microscope, it is observed that the mitochondria are covered by a double membrane wall. The outer membrane of mitochondria is smooth and porous while the inner membrane has folds termed as cristae. The space present between cristae is called matrix. The matrix contains lipids, proteins, ribosomes and circular DNA. Functions of mitochondria Synthesis of various amino acids occurs in mitochondria. They provide important intermediates for synthesis of biochemicals like chlorophyll, steroids, cytochromes, etc. Mitochondria can prepare some of their own proteins. Mitochondria are responsible for cellular respiration. Because of this, Mitochondria are called the powerhouse of this cell. Here, let us perform an activity to observe the chloroplast in real leaf. Click each tab to know more. Take a real leaf and break it to take out a peel. Place this peel on a slide and put a drop of water on it. Next, cover it with a cover slip. Place the slide mount under microscope and observe it. Small green colored granules are observed from microscope. The green colored granules are called chloroplasts. Chloroplasts mainly contain green colored substances called chlorophyll. Here, let us perform an activity to observe chloroplast in algae. Click each tab to know more. Collect some water from a lake or pond which appears dark green in color and contains filamentous structures. Next, separate thin filaments. Take a permanent slide. Place few filaments on a slide and cover it with a cover slip. Now, observe the slide under compound microscope.
Large numbers of lighter shaped structures are observed from microscope. The large numbers of later shaped structures are called chloroplasts. Chloroplast is a type of plastids present in green color. Chloroplasts are of different shapes such as disc, oval, etc. In algae, these can be found as letters, stars, spirals, or reticulate. The diameter of the chloroplasts varies depending upon the heights of the plants. In higher plants, the diameter varies between 4 to 10 microns. Here, let us perform an activity to observe the vacuoles in cactus leaf. Click each tab to know more. Take a leaf or stem of any moist plants like torch cactus. Take a thin cross section of stem of cactus. Take a watch glass and add few drops of water in it. Now, place the cross section of cactus in a watch glass. Add few drops of dilute saffron in solution on it. With the help of forceps, Place the cross section of cactus from watch glass onto the slide and cover it with a cover slip. Now place the slide under microscope. Observe it under low and high power. Large empty spaces are observed in the cells when viewed from microscope. The large empty spaces present in the cells are called vacuoles. These vacuoles are fluid-filled sac-like structures present in animal cells and plant cells. In animal cells, vacuoles are small in size when compared to plant cells. In case of matured plant cells, the vacuoles occupy almost the entire cell space. Follow up work. Take up the following activities. Prepare a model of plant or animal cell with locally available materials. Observe the mitochondria by taking leaves of a cassiotora or cheek cells. Prepare a temporary mount of any leaf peel and observe the stomata under microscope and draw their picture. Read the chapter carefully and collect the information about different cell organelles and their functions. Mention them in a table. Look at the cartoon of a cell given in the image and find out the functions of these cell organelles. Collect information about electron microscope from your school library or internet. Discuss the details with your teacher. List a few examples of osmosis that are observed in our daily life. Example is as shown on the screen. List a few examples of diffusion that are observed in our daily life. Example, air fresheners. Perform an activity for observing materials in different solutions by using dried carrots. Observe the figures of bone cell, red blood cells and white blood cells under microscope and label its parts. Collect information about their functions. Drawing skills. This section helps you to sketch images in a step-by-step -step manner. Click each tab to know more.
You have successfully completed the chapter, The Fundamental Unit of Life.